Welcome to this Friday edition of Market Call. I'm Mark Bunting in for Michael Hainsworth. For the next half hour, Stephen Conville, Vice President and Portfolio Manager at Blackmont Capital, will be taking your questions on North American large caps. To reach us with your questions, call toll-free at 1-877-667-6288. If you're in Toronto, dial direct at 416-957-8199, or you can email us at marketcall at bnn.ca. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you for having me. So the big story today, U.S. Uh, employment numbers, uh, uh, very disappointing. Uh, we did get a, a sense yesterday based on the ADP report, based on what Goldman Sachs did in revising its numbers, that it might be ugly. What's your impression of what we saw today? Well, my opinion is, is this is not a surprise. It's something that I think um, only makes sense. When you get the largest um, market correction in, in modern history, and that's based upon um, a massive leveraging of, um, of, the, of, 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 of investments and assets and, and, and quite honestly, employment um, worldwide, um, the contraction is not going to be uh, uh, six months. We throw some um, uh, bank money at it, some tax money at it, and uh, everything's going to be okay. I think <clears throat> this uh, recovery will definitely be a, a, a long and protracted U-shape. And the thoughts of um, let's just throw some stimulus and we'll be back as good as usual, I think uh, those ideas are are far-fetched. All right. So if that's far-fetched, uh, where do we stand in the markets? Clearly, uh, since October started, basically, it seems like investors are backing away, uh, taking some risk off the table, sending stocks lower. What do you think? Um, I agree wholeheartedly. You see, you know, this is an interesting um, position. You've got pension funds, they need returns. You've got sovereign funds, they need returns. You've got individual investors, they need returns. They're, you've got portfolio managers, they need returns because we're all a, about a return-based culture. That's juxtaposed against um, uh, an interest rate environment that's zero. So where do you go for yield? Unfortunately, before I believe the equity market was ready, people have had to try and get their earnings where they can. And that's why even though intuitively it doesn't feel right, the stock market has been rallying and rallying and rallying off the lows. So what's the, the best thing to do right now for investors? Where do you put your money? Well, what, what um, I have been advising investors is Let's, let's be cautious. Let's be pragmatic. So where you see a good quality dividend paying or um, distribution paying um, stock that was beaten down, but the balance sheet is good, that's where you go f to get your um, growth and for your yield. But the growth is for long term. And you almost have to look at quality dividends as a way to get your yield because um, the coupon on, on government's short term is, is almost zero. Although one thing we discovered today in a report is that in Q3 in the United States, companies raise their dividends at the, the, uh, the lowest level ever on record. So they're not, I mean, there are dividends out there to be had, but they're not raising them. Yes, is, but you see, if you've got a stock at the right price, where the balance sheet is strong, so they're not going to be cutting them, you would have had attractive yield. The problem for investors now is the only companies that still have quality dividend yield because the market prices have run up so high are less attractive companies. All right, Stephen, more from you and uh, questions for you. After this, we'll be back with Stephen Conville, Vice President and Portfolio Manager at Blackmont Capital. We are answering your questions, or at least he is, on North American large caps. There are the numbers. Uh, you can send us an email as well. We'll be back. All right, we're back on Market Call. Straight to the phones we go. And a reminder, we're talking about North American uh, large caps with Stephen Conville from Black Mountain Capital. Let's talk to Dave in Saskatoon. Hi there, Dave. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, my question to Stephen is about Royal Bank for a long-term holding, which is uh, five to ten years. And... Which bank, Canadian bank, is his favorite bank? Thank you very much. Well, Royal Bank is my favorite uh, bank. I think that um, it's well run. I think its uh, attention to detail is, 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 is very good. And I think that investors over a long term um, will be rewarded. Uh, you know, off the bottom, I think it was the buy of the century. Um, I think it just unbelievable value um, if you had bought it um, 
at the lows. Um, at this price, I think you could probably get it, you know, maybe three to five dollars cheaper in the next uh, few months. But uh, when that takes place, um, I think you should uh, definitely consider this as, as a key holding in your portfolio. All right, Stephen, back to the phones. Let's talk to Heidi in Coquitlam, B.C. Hi there. Good morning. I am interested in buying some stocks. I'm thinking of Agrium or Rim. Which is a better stock to buy? Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Technology or uh, potash? Well, you know what? Ironically, they're, they're very, very similar, in my opinion, in terms of uh, risk profile. So the first thing that I'd like to say is, you know, I'd love to know what this portfolio is. And believe it or not, there are a lot of investors out there that think a well-diversified portfolio is agrium, potash, and uh, maybe a gold stock. Um, to me, that's a formula for disaster if that is your um, investment strategy. So first of all, let's attack agrium. Agrium um, is in a good Good position. It's, you know, I believe the number two um, essentially fertilizer and fertilizer um, a commodity uh, company that I would say in the world. Um, I think that um, for investors, you have to look in a slowing economy, um, fertilizer demand and stuff like that may wane. But um, for the long term, if you don't mind a very, very choppy ride, it's, it's, it's not a bad position. RIM, on the other hand, this is a technology company. And one of the troubles with technology companies is, is when does a technology company go from being a growth company to a large cap, you know, slow growth stock like and a microsoft like maybe. a microsoft right. so the the issue that i have with with rim here is a lot of people are expecting this is the stock that's going to get me fifty dollars a share in the next quarter and i'm concerned that those days might be gone for the investor who is expecting to make that hundred and sixty dollar high and and make their money back Based upon its market share and its positioning, I think it's really now a leader. It's not an upstart. And the percentage of population that are core BlackBerry users, I think the percentage growth there is going to wane. So this is a company, again, that I would say you, you could do well in, but for the next couple of quarters, you could see a, a 15 to 20% drop from here if investors are not satisfied that it's going to give them the, the alpha that they're looking for. So if you had the choice, you'd buy Agrium over RIM right now? If I had the choice um, for a long-term hold, I would probably buy, Agrium, uh, buy RIM. But if you're concerned about volatility, I would buy Agrium. All right, Stephen, an email now from Dan in Port Robinson, Ontario, on Merck. I would like to hear your thoughts on Merck. I'm down and looking for a reason to hang on to the stock. <laughs> well, um... Depending on how far down you are, I might, um, might disappoint you. Um, this is a, a stock that I would recommend for current purchasers into the equity market. Um, I think the dividend is currently around 5%. Um, Big Pharma is definitely cash rich, so I'm not concerned about a short-term cash burn. However, um, the... The rate of fantastic drugs that they can bring to market, I think, for all these companies is slowing down. So as a result, I don't see it getting back to $56, $60 anytime soon. I think it's going to be a creepy crawly. And if you're not happy with uh, it being maybe $36 in 12 months, um, I think you should look elsewhere. All right. Let's take a call now from uh, Wayne in Toronto. Hi, Wayne. What's your question for Stephen today? Hi, Stephen. Thank you for taking my call. My question is about Rogers Communications. Uh, they have a pristine uh, balance sheet, and yet they've been just beaten down badly for the last two years. Um, it's depending on, on, on your definition of pristine. Um, you know, the, the, the communication companies, and specifically Rogers, they do carry a lot of debt. Now, they have been able to retire um, some of it, so it's not as leveraged as it once was. Um, again, it's a company that, yes, they have great 
um, inroads into the cellular and to the television market. But, you know, they're high margin areas like the iPhone or people taking huge cable packages and um, them being able to make uh, great acquisitions, I think those days are done. So when it is looked at as a utility dividend play in this marketplace, I think in the next um, few quarters at least you're going to be disappointed. However, um, as a long-term investment, I would probably look at picking up this stock maybe uh, 3 or $4 lower from here um, if the market continues to bleed down. And then I think it's a long-term keeper in your portfolio. So $24 or $25. I'm just noticing technically over the last several months it's bumped its head against the 200-day moving average, can't get over it, and actually recently fell below the 50-day. The but we're going to be back with more questions and emails for Stephen Conville, VP and uh, Portfolio Manager at Blackmont Capital, answering your questions on North American large caps. There are the numbers or send us an email. We'll be back. We're back on Market Call. We're talking about North American large caps, and we're speaking with Stephen Conville from Blackmont Capital. We're going to go back to the phones and talk to Bill in Ottawa. Hi, Bill. Hi, uh, Stephen. You seem to be getting a theme today of uh, long-term holds versus these quick uh, make a you know make a quick buck questions. Uh, my question is about Imperial Oil. Uh, I'm kind of puzzled as to why. None of the other analysts have mentioned it recently. I used to hear very good things about it, uh, very good return on equity, almost no debt. Um, what do you think of it? You know what? I like the stock. Um, and I think you probably just by virtue of market sentiment will be able to pick it up a little cheaper from here. But this is a, a company that I will be looking at um, for my clients in the next little while. And the reason why I like it is because it didn't get caught up in too much of the, what, what do you want to call it, green shoot, bear market, yeah. rally, all these terms. It didn't get caught up in that. And that's, that's really why I like it. Um, it's got great fundamentals, great balance sheet. Yes, it is sensitive to the price of oil, but um, I think in time, um, you know, as I said, for a long term, I mean, you could probably get a 100% rate of return in, in, in four or five years. And, and to me, um, that's fantastic. All right, a recommendation there on Imperial Oil. Uh, let's take an email now from Tim in Ottawa. Uh, this is on Shoppers Drug Mart. Shoppers has been moving sideways for some time now. Do you see any significant movement in six months to a year? What do you think about Shoppers? Um, uh, you know, Shoppers is one of those companies that people co consider a traditional defensive play. I must say I love Shoppers Drug Mart as a Canadian male because it's my Walmart. At 2 o'clock in the morning, yeah. I can go in right. and get everything I need for 10 times the price. But, um, you know, realistically, I, I look at anecdotal things. There's a lot of expansion there. So I am concerned that, like, how many shoppers, drug marts does each community need? Um, so each time they open up a, a store, I think they require more and more of a, of a, of a margin there to, to, to drive their return. Um, to be quite honest, I do not see shoppers moving much higher from here. And because it does not have an extremely attractive dividend, it's not the type of company that I would say... Um, I would be liking to hold for a long term. Interesting. All right, let's uh, go back to the phones and talk to Everett in Burnaby, B.C. Hi, Everett. What's your question? Uh, it's on Enbridge, and thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Sure. And um, if one day you got Peter Schiff on there. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, for, for me, Enbridge, um, I'm looking at this as, uh, as, a, as, a, as a core holding and, and, and a utility position. Um, it's got a, a decent uh, dividend. Um, and again, it's not really a stock that had um, a massive run up. So if you're looking to uh, post massive bear market rally, um, a position that I, I, I don't think it would be a bad idea pairing with Imperial Oil if um, we get a pullback here. 
um, I think it's a company that um, would do well in, 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 a, in a good Canadian's portfolio. So you get in at this level or you wait a bit? I would wait a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, I, I don't think that someone um, who just bought it um, has to worry about a, a 30 or 40 percent uh, correction. All right, Stephen, we're going to talk to uh, Mohammed now in Edmonton. Hi, uh, what's your question today? Hello, I want to buy ETF HNU. I want to know if it's a good idea to buy it or uh, wait for uh, some time or when I should buy it. Okay, thanks, Mohammed. Okay, so if, if you are really, um, you know, a long-term bull on natural gas, I would advise... Um, I can't remember the symbol right now, but um, Horizons Beta Pro have a, a single um, long um, ETF because I don't really like to hold the uh, double long for investment. Now, I will be honest and say um, I have, you know, suffered a few um, portfolio casualties in this stock myself. Um, but um, when I exited the position and re-entered the position around... Um, $3 uh, nat gas a share, um, I've done quite well being able to exit the position um, a few days ago. So um, it's not the type of thing you, you want to hold. Um, sir, I would advise you to look at this as a trading position. And um, if you want to be a natural gas investor, look at a single long ETF. All right, Stephen, we're going to wrap things up with you after this and get your top picks on Market Call.